Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics. Today's tutorial will be on VAR and Impulse Response Functions in Stata. So what do you understand by Impulse Response Function? It explains the reaction of an endogenous variable to one of its innovation. It also describes the evolution of the variable of interest along a specified time horizon after a shock in a given moment. Impulse Response Function is an essential tool in essential cost analysis and policy effectiveness analysis. It also tracks the impact of a variable on other variables in the system. The IRF traces the effects on present and future values of the endogenous variable of one standard deviation shock to one of the innovation. Also, in signal processing, the impulse response of a dynamic system is its output when presented with a brief input signal called an impulse. The IRF can also be used to explain the concept of pass-through, which is the degree at which changes in a variable are passed to other variables at different stages, either directly or indirectly. And lastly, it can be used to further assess the tendencies of significant grandeur causality or grandeur relationship in the vast system. So these are the various explanations or various interpretations of what an impulse response function is all about. Now on the screen is a three variable var model, which I'm going to use to explain the dynamics of an impulse response function. By now we know that all the use are the errors, they are also called innovations in the language of shocks. So it is these innovations that we are going to analyze and see their dynamism within the VAR model. Given that individual coefficients in the estimated VAR model are often difficult to interpret, practitioners often estimate what we know as the impulse response function. Simply because the IRF will trace out the response of the dependent variable in the VAR system to shocks in the error terms, and these shocks are denoted by U1, U2, and U3 from the VAR model I showed you in the previous slide. So using the PDI equation, suppose UI, which is in the PDI equation, increases by one standard deviation. So what will be the effect? Such a shock or change will first of all change PDI in the current period as well as future periods. But because PDI appears in the PCE and GDP regression, the change in UI will also have an impact on PCE and GDP. So let me go back to the VAR model to show you exactly what I just explained now. So let's take a look at this VAR model. The PDI equation, if there is a shock to the error term here, it will impact on PDI both in the current and future periods. But because PDI is also in the PCE and GDP equation, PDI here will now influence the values of PCE. It will also influence the values of GDP. So that is what the effect of a one standard deviation shock to U1T will result in. Likewise, a change in one standard deviation in U2 in the PCE equation will also have an impact on PDI and GDP. And the same thing for a change of one standard deviation in U3 of the GDP equation. So basically, the IRF traces out the impact of such shocks for several periods in the future. Although the utility of the impulse response function analysis has often been questioned by researchers, it is still the centerpiece of the VAR analysis. So IRF is essential to any VAR estimation. So what is the step-by-step -step procedure in Stata? Number one, specify the model correctly, perform stationarity tests, determine optimal lags for the model, then go ahead to estimate the basic VAR. After that, you have to perform some diagnostics to ensure that the model is stable, the errors are not serially correlated, and at best, the residuals are normally distributed. After that, perform impulse responses, then interpret your results. For further references, look up these materials shown on your screen. It will give you more information on impulse response function. Stay with me, don't go away. My next video will cover the hands-on practical example on how to estimate and interpret an impulse response function. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. 
Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users. Share my videos, share my links to your colleagues on every social media platform. Please don't go away. I'll be right back. Next tutorial will be on hands-on practical example on how you can estimate impulse response function and also interpret your results.